Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we are starting with a physique update of Anton Wyant. This is his most recent physique update in which he looks amazing. He actually looks really good. Now, I really thought that he's gonna retire, or at least take it easy with the competition for a while before his health is in check. He posted this all the way back in February and he talked about it on his YouTube channel. Basically, his heart was not exactly perfect. He had a very high uh, calcium score, so... I thought he was gonna either retire right then and there, or at least take a couple of years off of bodybuilding, see what's what, make sure that he's healthy enough and then compete, but no, apparently he decided to compete right away this year. Instead of taking some time off of training and off gear, he decided to do the most stressful thing that one can put their body through, basically, one of the for sure. I mean, I've competed, I know what it takes, it, it's really it's really hard on your body, and he decided to do that at this moment, it's definitely not the best thing for his health, for his heart, by the way, this video is from two days ago, so you can see his physique, and he looks good, I mean, the guy has two bicep tears, and this thing now, so I kind of get him, like, he wants to do bodybuilding, he really wants it, but all these misfortunes are happening to him, so he was probably like, it's just another obstacle that I need to overcome and I'm gonna compete. That's probably what he was thinking, so he decided to do it. But like after so many deaths in bodybuilding, I'm, I'm scared for him, I honestly am. But I gotta say, he looks phenomenal. I mean, look at the size of those freaking legs. His arms are smaller than the rest of his body, but that was always the case. He's not changing that in one prep or one off season. But entire physique flows really well, it's a very aesthetic physique, right? And his posing also has improved, he has a posing coach right now, he's trying to make his posing perfect, and it is a great thing, like, because he's gonna be facing uh, Ian Valier. And it's very interesting what Ian thinks about competing against Antoine and whoever else at Vancouver Pro, so let me show you what he had to say at Vuera Biad's podcast. What's going on with you, man? Are you gonna win this show? What? What an insulting thing to say. I love it, yes. What if I somebody shows up? That's like who? Than you. The confidence, baby, I love I it. Who? You don't think you... you exactly, think you who? Beat everybody? I think there's four or five people in the world I can't beat, and I do not think any of them will be there. That's such an amazing thing to say. Well, it's a true statement. I didn't make it up. Hmm. What Relatively about? true. What's Vancouver? Who's doing Vancouver? Anybody special? Yeah, who's doing it, you know? I think Antoine's doing it. Antoine? I think Antoine. Yeah. So it seems like Ian is not very much impressed with the Vancouver Pro lineup, nor he's scared of Antoine Wayant. You could say that he's being arrogant, but really, he's just confident. I mean, he's the seventh at the Mr. Olympia. He won four pro shows. He has beaten so many great competitors that I think he has the right to say something like this, to feel this way, to be this confident. I wouldn't say he's arrogant. I think he's just confident. And I don't think anybody at Vancouver Pro is going to challenge him. Not really. Not even Antoine. But I gotta say one thing. Antoine is bringing good shape, good conditioning, and he has improved posing. And it seems like Antoine's strong points are Ian's weaknesses. For example, Antoine has amazing, crazy-looking calves, while Ian's calves are horrible, non-existent, basically. They both have really good legs, but Antoine has more of a sweeping quad, and Antoine also has a really good midsection. Very, very aesthetic-looking midsection, while Ian's midsection is not exactly his strong point. He barely even does abs and thighs. He does some variation of abs and thighs and most muscular combination. But basically what I'm trying to do here is like try to, to create some sort of rivalry to make this show more fun. But really, I think Ian is going to destroy uh, Anton because he's so much bigger. This is Ian in 2019, Vancouver Pro, and here he was really freaking massive. He looked like a monster, right? And he's even bigger right now, today. So yeah, you'll be my guest. I mean, try to find a reason why, how Anton can beat Ian. But you can't really find many. This is one of the reasons why Antoine is going to be a good comparison against uh, uh, Ian. Because he's also a good poser. And now he has a posing coach. So he's going to make his posing perfect. And Ian is not really a great poser. I mean, he does know how to do the mandatory is the best way possible. But he's not exactly an artist when it comes to posing. But I don't think that's going to help uh, Antoine's case too much. I think Antoine is not going to win this show. Uh, can he be second? Well, that would be a success. Uh, I think he can. I think there's no other uh, really high-level competitors. We don't know who might jump in. 
And no, it's not going to be Quinton area. Quinton area is going to do Texas this year. So guys, tell me, what do you think about Anton's physique right now? Do you think he can somehow challenge Ian Valier? And what do you think about him prepping right now after having uh, you know, heart problems, after finding out he has heart issues? Tell me what you think about that in the comment section down below. Before we move on to the next topic, I just want to introduce to you guys the classic creatine. It is very well micronized, so it mixes with water so well. It has basically no taste. But it is one of those supplements that actually really help. Like you can see a big difference, look and strength wise. So guys, if you want to support me and my channel, try this classic creatine. Use the link in the description of this video and use the code D1 for a 12% discount. Now let's move on to the next topic and it is going to be Rolly Winkler, who seems to be starting to get bigger. Now the last time we saw him, he seemed uh, downsized quite a bit. Not just downsized, not just smaller, but he lost all that pop. Look at the delts here. Look at the traps. They are basically non-existent. Uh, shoulders are not popping at all. Chest looks flat and he looks like he got some fat even. And no, this is not a Rolly Winkler that we are used to. It looked like he was retired. Look at the size of the legs too. Like he lost some serious size here. And I thought there was no way he's going to be competing again. I mean, his previous, I mean, last year's competitive season was, uh, was a failure. A really bad failure. Like he was beaten by everybody and anybody. I mean, he was like third at the Mr. Olympia a couple of years back. He was almost, he was at the verge of winning the Mr. Olympia and becoming the best bodybuilder in the world. And he ended up being like top 6 at the mid-level pro shows. And after that season, he lost a lot of weight. Now, I thought there was no way he's gonna be coming back from this, but... Look at him now. Much better than in that previous photo. Now, he still doesn't look uh, like the beast he used to be. But again, look at the delts, look at the traps, look at the arms, look at the forearms. Uh, look at the, the waistline, I mean overall like the entire illusion of his body, his waist, uh, his waist didn't lose any size, but his body, the rest of his body uh, gained more muscle, and so his waist looks smaller because of the illusion, uh, also his legs are bigger, so he definitely got back the t-shirt he lost. Now is he gonna be retired? I don't know, I don't know, he never really announced anything, but you know, he, he lost a lot of size and he got it back. So uh, I'm curious, why would he do that? Why did he lose that, that much size? That's also the question. Like, did he go completely off of all the gear and completely stopped training? Probably also completely stopped uh, force feeding, eating the way he feels like. And probably that's why he lost all that size. Did he do it for mental reasons or for health, like physical health purposes? I don't know. But apparently, obviously, in this most recent photo of his, he looks much better. He looks fuller, bigger, rounder. He doesn't specify if this is uh, recent or not, but it's not like a physique update. It's just him in a t-shirt. So it wouldn't really make a lot of sense if this was a throwback. You know, it's, it's probably recent. So I'm really curious. I want to know if he's going to compete again or not. I think his body is still fresh enough that he can compete again. I just don't know if he's going to respond the same way it used to respond back when he was at his heydays. It's not like he has a bunch of injuries and that he lost his symmetry or that his stomach got blown out. It's nothing like that, really. He just, you know, lost size and that's it. Maybe it's simply father time. Maybe his body doesn't want to hold on to that much muscle at that age. Maybe his body is not reacting as well to, to, to chemicals. I don't know what it is, but he, he didn't lose the aesthetics. He didn't lose the shape. He just lost some tissue. And if he can bring back all that fullness and hardness, he can come as big as he once was with the same conditioning, I think he'll still be one of the top contenders. What do you guys think? As a bodybuilding fan, I just really hope that Rolly is taking some time off, letting his body and his mind rest and recover, and then he's gonna come bigger and better than ever. On that note, we have a physique update of Rafael Brandau in his off-season, in a shape that we are not really used to seeing uh, Rafael in. Not, not that he is fat or anything like that, like this is a proper off season, I mean, his body fat percent is still very low, I mean he still competed very recently, but he did gain uh, a lot of size. Now of course that's not all tissue, but obviously he is eating. Rafael Brandau usually looks very neat in his photos, I mean he is the aesthetics guy, right? And here he is hairy, he is a little bit bloated, and uh, you know I like seeing him this way in the off season because this means he is growing. 
but I'm just a little bit worried when I see these guys growing that they can mess up their shape. And as I said, Rafael is known for his aesthetics, for his shape, for his lines, and I don't think he's ever gonna be a mass monster. So if he tries to put on a significant amount of size uh, to be able to match some of the freaks like Ashley just mentioned, Ian Valier, I think he's gonna lose uh, playing that game. I think that's not his game. I think he should play aesthetics game, right? Because he has that. I mean, uh, standards in bodybuilding today, in open bodybuilding, mass is definitely crucial. It is important. It is probably the most important thing. But if you're not meant to be a mass monster, but you are meant to be a classic, aesthetic-looking guy, and you still have a lot, of, a lot of size, like Raphael does, that's the game that he should play, and I'm pretty sure he knows that. He, he relaxes a little bit in the offseason, he's probably gonna make some changes, some improvements, here and there, but hopefully he will not get too big, too massive, because if he does that, I don't think he's gonna be as massive as some of those mass monsters, and he might lose the aesthetics. It happened to so many bodybuilders that when they tried putting on a lot of weight in a short amount of time, they put all that weight in their midsections, in their obliques, uh, stuff grows that shouldn't grow, and the rest that should grow stays the same or grows a little bit. So, you know, it's a losing game if he plays it, and I think, and I, and I believe he will not do that, I think he will stay aesthetic, make smaller changes, smaller improvements, and he will be one of the top guys in the future, I believe so. We kind of have a similar situation right here with uh, Brian Jones, a former classic physique Mr. Olympia top 6 finisher, and he decided to do the open, to stop doing uh, classic physique. He was, uh, he was good for classic, for sure. And of course, he cannot do 212 because he's a little bit taller. Probably not as tall as you may think, though. Uh, he, he replied to one of the comments and he said that he's actually 5'11". Though he looks at least 6'1", like Chris Bumstead, maybe even taller than Chris. I would say, I would guess that he's 6'1", 6'2", but really, he's 5'11", only. That's like James Hollingshead, for example. And um, he has really crazy proportions and that's why he seems bigger and taller. I'm not so sure about his weight, but a couple of months ago he was like 245, and uh, in these photos, new recent photos, he looks bigger. So I'm guessing around 255, 260, maybe, maybe even more, I don't know, I can only assume, but he does look really impressive, he does look very freaky. He is a former classic physique competitor, and as I just said, uh, he is kind of a similar situation like Rafael Brandau, so should he try to not put way too much weight, but to come in, you know, aesthetic, with a smaller waist, with a pretty shape, with, with pretty lines. I don't think so, not really. I mean, it's kind of a similar situation, but this guy has such a small waist that I don't think putting on more size is gonna hurt him. I think it might help him. I mean, he is very limb dominant, right? I mean, he has really big arms, really big legs, and a small waist. So I think this guy just needs to put on more muscle, and when he is done, when he's when he actually comes in like uh, like as big as open bodybuilder and it will happen maybe this year maybe next year maybe in 3 years but it will happen this is going to be one seriously dangerous bodybuilder guys i'm telling you what do you think about brian jones whatever you guys think tell me in the comment section down below like this video if you enjoyed it and for more videos like this subscribe to my channel guys thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye